one of YouTube's biggest channels asked us to build a celebrity's concept car before the celebrity did. This is how we built a fully functioning vehicle out of a glorified napkin drawing in just two weeks and how everything, I mean everything, went to absolute. And the start of that, Woo! Snow wheeling with this thing is gonna be sick! Oh, getting glass everywhere, but you know, things happen. I am keeping this. There's gonna be a lot of long hours put into this build in the next couple weeks. So this is gonna be great. This is gonna be the, uh, I need a break for five minutes. Check. Let's see if we can unload it without breaking it more. It only turns left. It does not go straight. Let it down. Yep. Nice. At this point, you may be a little bit confused, but this is a 2014 KTM Adventure 1190. That's 1200 cc's of V-twin fuel injected power, and it makes 150 horsepower and about 92 foot-pounds of torque. It's not far off from the specs of that crusty old engine running on propane, and more importantly, it weighs probably 200, 300 pounds less. It also has a six-speed transmission built into it. So that means we now have a six-speed transmission going into a six-speed transmission. And it means that with this little tiny engine, we can move that both slower and faster in theory. I don't suppose there's gas in it, but let's see if it turns over. Well, that was easy. Now seems like a good time to mention that the original design is likely based on mid-engined amphibious vehicles, where the engine would be right underneath the seat and the driver would sit far forward in the cab. So this type of body would not work with the engine we had in our monster truck minivan. So instead, we swap out to the smaller dirt bike engine. It's right in between the driver and passenger. The concept car looks exactly the same. It fits, it's fast, it's easy. That's what we ran with. Yeah, it's cold. It's freezing cold out here. Jeez. Well, look, you're even catching most of it. Most of it. Hi, Ed. How are you? You missed me. <laughs> Every time you see this, no, I'll be gone. <laughs> That's a chunk. It's 539. You, you, you won that bet. Yes. I was actually going to guess 5,000 push ups, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> so we've determined that everything forward of here is no longer required and uh, can become massive quantities of weight reduction. We have the fan here. This is a high-tech filtration system. We're good. You know what's it's only like blowing into its You know what's a really high-tech filtration system? <laughs> what's that? Your lungs. That's true. I I've heard that. Oh, that's good. You guys got it. Peel it down and rub Oh, yeah. It. No wonder you're having a hard time cutting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's all sand. It's completely full of sand. Look at that. Yeah, this really is weight reduction. reduction right there. We got the other end out. We'll just blast it, it, it all through. out. Yeah. yeah. Realizing that we're doing this beside an entire rack of us, like, 
<laughs> aerosol cans. That's yeah. normal. It's fine. <laughs> That's totally normal. <laughs> Normally, there's cans of gas around too. The guys are about to start cutting everything off the frame we don't need to make this concept car. I want to show you guys a little spoiler from the next video because the BRZ just looks so good and we are giving this car away. Turboed, rally, BRZ, flat out suspension, the whole nine yards. All you gotta do to enter to win is spend $5 on our website. You actually get an entry for every $5 you spend. Check it out, grindheartplumbingco.com. You wanna win this car. It does go sideways far enough, that's good. Problem is it's sitting on the differential and there is five yeah. <laughs> inches of up travel. Shoot. From that point. So I guess let's see what happens if we move it forward enough to clear the differential. Uh, we have it shimmed up with uh, 16 pieces of wood and the handle of a hammer. Perfect. Nailed it. I think I'm gonna build a motor mount real quick with uh, some CAD that aligns, that is, um, you know, from this boxed end of the frame rail here, straight to this old uh, swing arm mount, because <clears throat> that's the beefiest part. And then once we get that close, we can just rotate on that. <clears throat> and I'll just do one for now, one mm -hmm. end of it. We can bolt it to that, and then we can fine tune the angle and the the yep. twit, all of them, because it'll bend a little bit, it'll move. So all I have to do is make sure that it's the right distance this way, and then we can kind of twisty finagle it the rest of the way from there. I've been bugging him for like every 30 <laughs> minutes since we've got here to yeah. do this. We've been here for like two days, yeah. so. This is bucket list level. I, I know if you're watching this, you you agree with me. It's, oh, this is a sure. bucket list for sure. Yeah. This is literally the coolest thing ever. Does it fulfill all your hopes and dreams? Yes. My legs are shaking right now. Like, <laughs> I can actually see it's that. It's literally shaking. <laughs> I can't stop it. Ryan and Tony have had their warm up laps. They've got used to the track and the machine. Now it's time to see which one of them is faster. <laughs> Loser has to jump in the pond. All right. Here we go. That's, wow, I didn't know we were going that hard. That's a pretty I mean, heavy consequence. <laughs> I'm gonna regret this. Three, two, one. Right away, I can tell you he's not using the berms. Yep, that's he's, gonna- He's losing a lot of time not using berms. He's losing a lot of time on the berms. It's looking good for you, Tony. Yeah. All right, yep. Tony gets another warm-up lap because the machine's cold and so is he. Oh. Loser has to jump into the pond. Nice. Which is about this deep and then this much mud. Oh, it's the, I didn't realize it was that. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, you could change it to the creek. Oh, no. you could change it to the creek. No, well, we, we, we already, already said the pond. pond. We can't change it. You can do two more laps if you like, but you don't need to. <laughs> you beat me by two seconds. 29.9, yeah, 29.95. It's very soft muck. And there aren't any large sticks. Can, can I get a countdown or something? Three, two, one, go. Oh. I can barely breathe, this is so cold. Yeah, I think like, I want to go get a hot shower no. now. 
Shush. No, we're just going back to work. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh. Plan for this morning is, whoop, pull one of these wheels off and do some measuring and math. We have Tony here. He likes math. I love math. Math Tony is gonna figure out some stuff with our offsets of old wheels versus new wheels plus spacers. We're gonna take this wheel off and bring in one of the tires and kind of position it roughly where we think it's gonna be so that we can define where the body's gonna be and how wide it can be and all of that nonsense. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> these four drum brake hubs off of two and a half ton Rockwell axles from something that depending on the chronology of these events, you may or may not have seen yet, but the point is they have a massively thick flange with a six bolt pattern in it. This six bolt pattern is way too big. And of course these holes are too large in diameter probably, but um, it's extremely thick. So my current plan is to take this because it has this sleeve or this flange here that could be bolted to the Unimog surface if I machine it flat and drill six new holes that line up with the Unimog pattern. And then it already has the extender part for the spacer. So all I have to do is make a new sleeve for the new bolt pattern and weld it on to whatever's left of this flange. Unfortunately, my lathe is not large. That's not much room for a person to sit in, but uh, being comfortable is not this thing's primary function. But weird seating positions are nothing new to us. <laughs> Time for the first uh, first roll cage tack. Yeah. with uh, custom weight reduction holes. It helps if you put the safety glasses over your eyes. Yeah. Is that, a, is, that a, is that a good fit or what? Look at that. Wow. It's like you know what you're doing. Kind of. Oh. Hmm. I wonder, is this physically possible? Oh no. Oh yeah, it works. I was concerned there wasn't enough space for this between these. Yeah. But they, it'll actually sit somewhere out here. There'll have to be little notches for it, so. Nice. You did it. Well, I did half of it. I'm proud like, of you. I did two thirds of it. It's a three piece thing. Three quarters mill. This is two thirds of it. We wanted to have a slight radius because straight lines look stupid. I haven't had an occasion to use this yet. Swag Off-Road sent us their premium pulp tubing roller and we have our brand new Rogue Fab fab table so we can clamp it down. We just got another very exciting pile of boxes. The black rhino. Actually, these showed up while I was gone picking up metal, so I just came home to a Christmas. I love 20s. They're a big enough wheel to like, oh, look at that. That looks Woo. so industrial. Now army. I really need to finish the wheel spacer that I'm making. Yes. Oh yeah. What do you think? Al Almo approves.
here's the ring with the new six bolt pattern in it. Um, and that sits into here. Um, unfortunately, these studs will not be removable because they get captured in there. So we won't let Will use the DAC DAC on them. So while Ethan's welding up his uh, wheel adapter, uh, Tony and I are going to finish up tubing the front end of this thing. It was pressed in and it went whoop. Whatever. This is putting out some heat today. Yeah. It really is. It's much faster than just Many using BGs. this. Why is the metal on fire? Why is your top hat on fire? That's what it looks like in here. Yes. to start the custom steel body so let me formally introduce Ryan and Tony from Crucible Coachworks. They have an awesome shop and YouTube channel where they build wide body Porsches and all kinds of awesome elaborate bodywork. Definitely go check it out, subscribe to their channel right now. Where's Will at? I'm gonna do my whale impression. All right guys, let's swindle this up in here. Nice man, premium, Subaru. You ready for winter? Oh, I'm, I'm not ready top. for winter, to be now honest, now <laughs> personally. I mean, it's better than the rain. I feel insulated a little bit. But it Believe will be. it or not, this flat piece of metal is gonna turn into a car. Part of a car. In anyway. front of your eyes. I feel like Martha Stewart, but in the snow. We were setting up our, our table here. And like, today we're going to be making candles with pumpkins. Wow, this looks like DeLorean metal. <laughs> DeLorean Ooh. metal. Do you know what DeLorean's made out of? The skin? Uh, stainless steel. Yeah, and yeah. They, they literally have a tool that, that they, they made specifically for making the stripes. Like the striping, the That's brush so look. cool. Yeah. And they recommend in the user manual to wash it with gasoline. Really? Yeah. I didn't know it's that. It's so weird. I saw a weird picture of it. It's like, wash with gasoline. <laughs> I was like, yes, that's how I would design a that's car. That's how you would design it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is a shrinker, and that other one over there is a stretcher. They look identical, but the jaws are different. Um, the way they work is through witchcraft and magic. You know, that was loud. Steven, you used to work construction. You know the jokes about board stretchers? Oh, yeah. Well, with metal, there is actually a metal stretcher. You crunch it, and these dies force together, and it'll literally force the metal into itself, which will shrink the, uh, the surface area of it. It'll actually make it thicker, but... The surface area will will also lessen, which is where the shrink comes from. That one will do the opposite and stretch it. And Hence, it, it says stretch. Yeah, I wrote and stretch it's also it. got Ryan's signature on. Yeah, it. I wanted to make sure that this that is going to be worth me. many dollars someday. Someday it'll be worth many many doll hairs. And it's been here on the wood stove, getting a little bit, you know, warmed up. That'll help the welds, uh, you know, penetrate better in that thick chunk of cast iron if it's vaguely hot. Time to weld it, and then we can put another tire on this thing. So we can have one on each side, and then I'll make two more spacers over the next, like, three days. Rockstar Garage helped us out big time with these Mickey Thompsons. You gotta check out their social medias. They build amazing off-road trucks all the time. It's fire.
Tis on! Ooh, look at that! Wow, that changed everything. I wanted to run me over at this point. I feel like it'd be comfortable. These tires are so big. <laughs> They're so squishy. If they were at zero PSI, you'd probably just be fine. Yeah, it'd be a nice back crack. The situation is Ryan wanted to make these fenders narrower and we all went, well, the tires are this wide. They should probably be this wide. They didn't trust the metal shaver. In PA, we don't, it snows hit or miss. Here, apparently it snows every day. Swindly of walks. Next time, Will's on camera. Use the sound effect of walking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at a wild Brody Slim. Dude. Actually doing some work. Brody Slim is carrying the team right now. Look at that. Look at that. He's doing all the crimping. Nice. And crimping ain't easy, and he knows that. I learned a whole metal thing. Will's been teaching me well. I mean, Ryan's been teaching me well. <laughs> the band? The band. Oh yeah, we've been. I've this been is all the things that, that Brody Slim has destroyed with the shrinker. Uh oh. These are all the iterations of tools we've used we to fix it. We keep trying new things, and finally a grade eight bolt is the trick. That's why I'm still wearing a... Uh, a grade eight bolt is bent also. Look at that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm wearing gloves because the handle keeps breaking and my knuckles go yeet into the table. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! So yeah, the I got protection. You should put a little blankie. Oh, well, I mean that could that work. would be a bad idea. How do you think we're doing on time so far? I think that we're dying. Everything hurts and I'm dying. We we what, what's today? Friday. Friday. We leave. We fly out like Tuesday at like noon. Yeah, so. Yep. Go go for it. Oh, yeah, yep, that's it. That? Now that you're in the groove a bit, how long did this spacer take? This is how legality works, right? I added a TM to the end, so it's extra legit. Things just are what you say they are, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, let's put a TM on it. Close enough. So now that we have the two front tires bolted on, we can measure the actual ground clearance, which will be exactly the same in the rear. And from the flattest surface within miles of here to the bottom of the diff is 20 and a half inches. And that's the lowest point on the entire vehicle. So like under the axle housing here on the sides, it's 24 inches. Like Will could live his whole life under this thing. Bjorn, is it doggo approved? What do you think? Huh? Come up here. Come on, climb up. Climb, doggo, climb. What do you think? She's going outside for the first time. I'm gonna pull it. With this three of the four tires on, because I haven't had time to make the fourth adapter. You never really know what something's gonna look like until you get far away from it and then look at it. It's like blizzarding out there. I think God says no. <laughs> well, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> it's so funny the difference between this tire and that tire. Oh yeah, that's a goofy goof. It was 
right at this moment when we could take a look at hundreds and hundreds of hours of work that we got the call from the YouTube channel that we were building this whole thing for and celebrity who designed the vehicle got super canceled and the project was off. No one wants anything to do with this person. We didn't either. And the way we had to build it based on the design is kind of pointless. So we had to undo our work and try to salvage the situation, make the coolest thing we could out of it. adapter made. We've got KTM splines on that side, Unimog splines on that side, and uh, now we just have to lift the engine up, put this onto the shaft, and then uh, it'll slide far enough back that we can set the engine down in and then slide it forward. These mounts turned out pretty sweet. Oh, thanks. All right, and uh, the coupler works. Just needs a few little taps. Dang. That is precision right there. Yep. Oh, and the, the go-kart hub holds it up? No, it doesn't hold anything. It, oh, you mean this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's so when you said cool. up, I was like, nothing holds it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I just had that around, and it's basically the right size. Well, in theory. We'll see what it does when I clamp it on there, but it was just in the box of parts, so I... <laughs> that is so sick. So last night, I was sleeping in this loft, and uh, my head was about two feet, three feet away from that mounting point. And then what happened, Ethan? Uh, at about 12.30, we were having a nice windstorm, and, and a nice we, nap. we assumed one tree fell on this and broke it. I, f I woke up to the feeling of moving left, the whole house moving left, not me, uh, yeah. because four trees fell on the zip line in sequence from like they didn't all like fall together they fell from four different directions and yeah. went boom 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 onto the zip line oh, no. and it broke it in half so this is the intro to like a phil collins song it's like <laughs> Last couple days I've been uh, working in here by myself, getting this thing ready to drive. So we've got a steering wheel. All of this is all just temporary because this is not gonna be this thing's final configuration. No matter what we do with it, maybe put the Jag body on it, maybe just build a roll cage, who knows? Brake and clutch assembly out of the Unimog, uh, you know, just kind of tacked onto the frame here. I have the clutch hooked up, but the very, 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 very simple linkage, which is just a piece of cable that pulls on the motorcycle clutch on a piece of tube tacked to the transmission housing here. And then this one's really funny. The throttle is just the twist throttle for the motorcycle with a little pedal <laughs> hose clamped onto it with a piece of scrap metal that I was a failed cut out from something else. 
I think it's time for a test drive. The brakes are need to be bled more, but it's okay. They they're marginal. Anyway, time to drive this thing around. We got some fresh snow. Uh, built the weirdest thing yet, I think. See how it moved backward there? Yeah. That was with the clutch all the way in. Uh oh. No, no, no. <laughs> that's fine. It's a motorcycle. They're, when their clutches are cold, they engage somewhat. Oh. But that's to illustrate how much of a gear reduction it has that it'll drive itself with a motorcycle clutch that's just a little cold. <laughs> has plenty of power. It needs better suspension, but that was obvious. Uh, so that was just there cruising up this hill. That was second gear in the Unimog transmission and sixth in the motorcycle transmission. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that, and it's still that slow. Right now I can only shift between first and second in here, which is good because those are the only two gears with reverse. Um, I can't get enough leverage to shift over into the other gears. That's fine. This is fast enough for this test drive, but yeah, that gives you an idea of how much, how slow it can go and how just the range of speed that it has is ridiculous. Oh, it's good. I should engage the uh, diff locks. See how that is. We'll see if it likes going up a hill. What are you doing? Oh no. Why? What have you done? Oh, it's just like straight. Should I grab a, a pink? Yeah. I don't understand what's happening right now. Well, I was just talking about getting a better skid steer. <laughs> I didn't want to do it by necessity. You know how they have those beanies? that you can like have headphones built into the beanies or lights built into the beanies. We should build one with muffers. That would be premium. It'd be good for like skid steering in the winter, doing this kind of thing, all kinds of things it'd be good for. I understand what happened. The blow-by, which inevitably there's some in a machine with 3000 hours on it, built up in the crankcase, the pressure built up because somehow this hose which is supposed to relieve that pressure was frozen shut. I wiggled it and a whole bunch of air came out. So I'll need to top off the oil, but at least it's not catastrophic engine failure. Problem. That was crazy. Also, I'm surprised it sounded like it actually had some engine braking, which those two little cylinders, I'm surprised it can slow that thing down.
I'm amazed they made it that far up that hill. Like, you can't tell how steep it is, but that's a grassy hill covered in a foot of snow. With a little more speed, it maybe make it up there. But when you have 36 gears to shift, it's kind of hard to get there. <laughs> There's no challenge there. Yeah. That looks crazy. Look, if I came in slightly diagonal, I could go up the tire and then up the bed. I'm gonna, I, That'd I be should, way better. I should try that. So I was filming a little TikTok, and uh, we just got a brand new phone for Grind Hard. And I was like, oh, I've never dropped my phone. We don't need Apple Care. It fell out of my hoodie pocket and <laughs> there's swindle machine tracks. Well, there's some socks. <laughs> right though. over it. I have faith. At least it has a case. At least you didn't raw dog the grind hard. Oh! Hey! <laughs> it's premium! Hey, look, it's All right. I don't know if I'm allowed to. No have more hoodie pockets, Edwin. No more hoodie pockets. They're open ended. You lean one way and it's gone. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't get crushed the second day we had it. That would have been unfortunate. So, do you get right up on the bed? I think so if I do it right. can drive over the Tacoma in the snow. Yeah. There's not much that's gonna be difficult for this thing. Remember we used to think these were big? I know, I remember, <laughs> yeah. Our <laughs> first big tires and now they look tiny compared to these ginormous 46s. Dude, this thing in Moab, like, you couldn't challenge it. No, like you just crawl over absolutely everything. Yeah. With these <laughs> tires and this much, this low of gearing, like you, you there would be nothing that would be a challenge except steering. <laughs> yeah. This is the grind hard workout routine right here. Power steering in an exhaust, it sounds so sad at the moment. It does, yeah, it's kind of burbly because it's just two yeah. straight pipes. Compared to the kernel, which is what it will basically sound yep. like. Oh yeah, it'll sound almost exactly like that awesome. depending on how the exhausts are routed. But... It's still my favorite thing. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> an e-throttle with just a piece of random <laughs> scrap cut out, strapped to it gotta stay. It's just too easy. This has been a wild ride. It's been a, an interesting progression of vehicle and a massive shout out to everyone that helped, especially Ryan and Tony from Crucible Coachworks. Shout out again to Rockstar Garage for helping us get these beautiful Mickey Thompson tires that will go on to do great things, I'm sure. Oh, this thing's just, the, the, the amount of flex it has is absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's, not even, the suspension's not even close to bottomed out on any of the corners, so it can flex more. And it's all the way up on the Tacoma. You need to find a taller thing to drive it on. It's ridiculous.
now that you guys have seen what this thing can do, let's talk about its plans for the future. But first, got to check out grindhardplumbingco.com. Get yourself entered to win this rally car or $10,000. This is the Jag body that's going on the Unimog chassis. We have it because a few years ago, we tried to do the gambler in it and more or less succeeded. We lost the cylinder. We went from fuel injected to carbureted. We put 31 inch mud tires on it. And then uh, later down the road, the engine became my kitchen table. The uh, axles and running gear actually became the 2J mower. So it's got a lot of history on the channel and now it's gonna have a future on the channel of being a Jaguar on 46 inch tires and portal axles. This thing's amazing.